fight. So, astrophysics, architecture, ants. <laughs> Fortunately for you, I'm your last nerd for tonight. So, I'm going to be talking about a particular 1980s science fiction movie and how it influenced this particular movement of mine where I use games to help save the world. So, this is the last Star Fighter, one of my favorite movies. It came out in 1984, so I know 1984 were chilling at home, Netflix and all that. Okay? Uh, I watched it in 1988, but this movie is about a teenager named Alex and how he discovered that his favorite video game was actually a simulator used by aliens to recruit him into a elite group of Starfighter pilots. Starfighters. Spoiler, by the end of the movie, he's the only one left. Okay? Now, that particular idea that games can actually be used, the skills in games can be used to save the world, is kind of interesting. Especially for a game. Now, since I'm a professor, I'm going to ask you, could you ask the gamers beside you, what do they think about that? Saving the world using your gaming skills. Technology now actually makes us 
what your significant other probably called you this morning. In Filipino, manhi. Makes us numb. Why? It becomes a distraction. Well, in my case, like my gamer, professor, I'm in a unique position. So, I want to use the same technologies that separate us and try to get us to develop what's called social empathy. Now, basically, so social empathy is where you understand others' situations by living them and sensing those experiences. And then you notice things are not equal. Now, interpersonal empathy just gives you that. You're called okay? But it will also need to bully, okay? offense, and a whole lot of things. Social empathy, which is also rooted in interpersonal empathy, gives you bigger problems. Us versus them behaviors such as racism, prejudice, and violence against other cultures. So I think this is a bit more important. Now, there's been some research, okay? Elizabeth Siegel from the University of, oh sorry, Arizona State University. Let's not forget the state youth, it's important, right? Uh, she identifies two things in using social empathy to, uh, to teach social justice. One thing is context. You have to learn about social context. The other is role playing. Mm, the gamers around are starting to nod their heads. Yes. So, how many of you play Skyrim? Okay. And the others are uh, clearly not reading themselves, okay? It's okay not to be out. <laughs> Just be honest with us, okay? So, when you play a hundred hours of Skyrim, what happens? Suddenly you learn about a digital culture. What's the difference between somebody from the Imperial Provinces and the Norths? Some of you are actually answering, you know, like, nerds, okay. Uh, what, what does who scroll down mean? Yes, yeah, somebody actually got it, congratulations. Perfect, so he's coming out. Okay, so, you're learning about cultures. Cultural topics. Now, if you play 100 hours of Skyrim, I'm guessing you're not playing as yourself, which is you tell this to them was about to be dismissed, they said. <laughs> Ouch. Unless you happen to be my student, maybe uh, no? Okay? You're playing as somebody else. Maybe you're playing as an enforcer of the law. Or somebody who's breaking it. Maybe you're a champion of the power. But you can also be an aggressor. Role play. Put those two together and I have a very good argument that games can be used to teach social empathy. Now, from my own experience, this is true. This war of mine is an indie game. It's where you take a group of three people, civilians, and try to get them to survive in a city that's torn by civil war. You have rebels, and you have government soldiers. And you try to scrounge through and live there. Now, normally, gamers will be a bit isolated from these things. Some of you may be becoming infected. Hey, I was one of those. But something happened. On the news came some reports that something similar was happening while I was playing in the real world in a city called Malawi. 
suddenly my game took on a different dimension. You're not just playing. You're seeing pictures, hearing of reports of people being abused. Looking just to survive. It kind of hit me hard. So I installed it. And I only just reinstalled it recently. Now, from that particular story, I think you can actually surprise. And yes, I will do it. I struggled with anxiety and depression. So when this came up, I was a bit, you know, contemplated that some game would actually represent something that I've been having problems with. This game, Darkest Dungeon, is one of the few that actually takes into account mental health. Now, when you're an adventurer, you're badass and all, you're able to defeat monsters, but we forget that adventurers are people too. And the stress sometimes gets to them. In the game, your adventurers can get mental illnesses. One of them is this. Sometimes they don't behave the way they should. Sometimes they won't allow their other party members to heal them because they become paranoid. And when you get them treated, when you're back and down, they're never going to be the same. This particular game taught me two things. One, whatever you're doing for work is not as important as your mental health. The second thing is, mental illness is never a flaw of your talent. This is a recent game I played with the revolution. Yes, there's a revolution in France, actually. I play a judge. And one of the cases that you're asked to handle is the case of citizen Louis XVI. Louis the Sixteenth. Now, if you're a history buff, we all know what happens. He's executed by guilty. Now, I was not, and I never think I will be, a supporter of capital punishment. And it's kind of hard when you're taking a look at all your evidence to try to be objective when the masses, the revolutionary government, and even your own in-game family wants somebody dead. I gave him to Mom Rude, and I sentenced a digital character to death. But then, he grew up twist. It's not enough that we judge. Black and white for, of course, understandable purposes. Click to pull the rope. I was hoping, waiting, that the game would just progress without any input from me. It didn't. I had to click. Again, one of the experiences I'm not proud of. Lastly, I did something home wrong because this particular game is actually by Sweet Wheel Studios, a Filipino game company. One of their game designers is actually from your ranks, one of my former research advisors. And since it's an election game where you take control of a particular candidate, you fight against another candidate in the campaign, in an election, let's see who wins. And it's a Filipino game, well, You can play characters such as him, right? And you can be a little bit more direct in your campaign. Some of the events in the game are actually coming from our news, such as this one, where some, some uh, business is asking for your help as a candidate. They'll help your campaign if you help them get rid of complaints from their employees for better health care. Now, I actually hosted several gameplay sessions 
this in NCR and in the Luna. The same thing happens. Players, they clean. And then somebody cheats. <coughs> the other team cheats. And then it's... That basically are elections. <laughs> so what happens is, afterwards, I process the event, I process the session, and everybody says the same. One, you have to be critical when you're choosing the candidates. It's not like that's going to change anytime soon. So I hope this game actually helps that. And the second thing here is, I ask them, would you vote for yourself? Give them the way Thank God they all say no. So, here's what I would like to call the Starfighter process. This is going to be your training. So, we're going to be Starfighters, heroes of the 21st century. How? We have to learn social empathy through games. So the first thing we do is play in groups, okay? Now we play online, don't play with your uh, friends. Let's bring back the times when they, we had player one and player two. Play in a group. The second here is, have a facilitator who's an adult. And I challenge you to look for the adult in this picture. I'll give you a hint, it's not the guy wearing black. Okay? Being an adult means you're mature. You have wisdom, you have wisdom. Something that you need to do when you're facilitating a game experience. Let the people, let the players talk about what they experience and what they do. Let them share. Next, reflect and look for real world examples of the phenomenon that you encountered in the game. And the same feelings. And I promise you, you'll be better prepared to step into their shoes. And finally, let's use various platforms to share ideas. Okay, next is one plus one. It's slide face to face. It is ready in social media. So, five steps. Now, if you learn how to play games this way, and you learn social empathy along the way, I have to give you a solution. And I apologize. I don't think my mom is there. <laughs> This is the salute they give in the game and the movie, and it's been modified for us. Greetings, Starfighters. You have been recruited by humanity to defend our frontiers against ignorance and indifference. Let's play, me and protect. Thank you.